Okay, hello everyone. I am terrified and if I don't pass out or have a heart attack in the next few minutes, I'll be talking about UV unwrapping complex models. Uh, so, is there anyone on the, on, on, on the auditory who doesn't know what the UV unwrapping is? No. Okay. So I'm going to skip the basic parts. Uh, <laughs> well, just to just to read it, uh, UV unwrapping is uh, UV map is a representation of a, a 3D object of a surface of a 3D object uh, unwrapped and represented by the uh, in a 2D space. And the name UV comes from the coordinates. Uh, since the coordinates uh, x, uh, y, and z in uh, 3D modeling is covered by the three models. Uh, uh, to avoid the confusion, uh, the new coordinates were introduced, which is U and V, and they correlate with X and Y in the 2D space. Uh, okay, why do we use them? Why do we need them? Uh, first of all, uh, it's preparation uh, of our 3D model to uh, made in order to uh, texture it with a bitmap. Uh, so basically, UVs are telling the bitmap where on the 3D model it should appear. Uh, and it's also used as a base to, uh, to uh, bake the uh, uh, information uh, contained in the model uh, to the uh, bitmap. So some rules now. Um, uh, it is the best when uh, UV islands, uh, so this piece of geometry, uh, are filling the uh, UV space uh, as tight as they can. Uh, also, it is a very good uh, situation when the UV islands of the separate objects on our scene uh, uh, correlates to the object. I mean. Uh, one object should, should be represented by one UV island. Uh, it's not a mistake if you cut the islands into two pieces or three pieces or more pieces, although uh, if you have a, mm, numerous objects on the scene uh, and you unwrap them, you will get up, uh, end up with a mess like this uh, in which you can actually... Mm, you have no idea which uh, island correlates with which part of a model or model. Uh, UV islands should not overlap over each other. And the UV map should, should have as little uh, stretches as it is possible. And it's also uh, a good custom not to create more than one uh, set of UVs. Uh, and obviously, uh, if you have rules, you have some sort of circumstances when uh, when you would break, it, you would be breaking at them. And sometimes uh, there is no physical way to uh, pack the UV space uh, with the most efficiency. I mean, cover the whole square area. Uh, and it's not a mistake if you have uh, some space left of it on the on the UV map. Mm, uh, now, the UV maps, the UV islands, uh, can be placed one on another if they are using the same uh, texture. As I said before, uh, splitting the islands is not necessarily a mistake. Sometimes it is just necessary. Uh, the stretches of, uh, of the UV grid can be compensated by texture painting. And multiple uh, UV sets are actually quite well uh, used by Blender. Although when you export files or you want to use them in uh, game renders or any other software, it may, might be not uh, working as well. Uh, and it's always, always good to remember and keep in mind that uh, the amount of work you put uh, to uh, put in uh, perfectly unwrapping the object is not uh, always uh, uh, is not always uh, sorry I got stuck thank you uh, 
Um, sometimes you don't need to put as much work in uh, in perfectly unwrapping views because uh, the effect won't be uh, as good as you just you know cut the corners. And the techniques of unwrapping the V maps in Blender, uh, I split them uh, into two models, into two algorithms. Uh, the Blender used to unwrap uh, the UV maps. Uh, it's uh, projection techniques and techniques based on the angles of, uh, of the unwrap. Um, and also important thing is that you can actually mix those methods together. I mean, if you have an object and you unwrap it, uh, you don't need to use one algorithm. You can select a part of an object and unwrap it with one algorithm and then select the rest of the parts and then use the other algorithm, uh, algorithm to unwrap them. And most of the techniques um, have some additional parameters we can use, and it changes the uh, algorithm of unwrap, and it can bring pretty much different results. Uh, so the projection techniques. Uh, it's uh, sort of like projecting the, our object in a 3D scene uh, to the virtual geometry. Uh, in case of cube projection, it's projecting it on a cube. Uh, the cylinder, the sphere, which I didn't know how to show you, uh, and project from view, which is uh, projecting the uh, UVs just like uh, you look at the at the object in the free view three D viewport. Uh, and the angle-based techniques. Uh, light map pack isn't actually a, a angle-based technique. Uh, it just splits splits the islands of UV uh, the same way that the, that the poly polygons uh, on the model are split. I mean, the model aren't split, isn't split, but the UV, uh, UV is created. The islands are created based on the on the geometry on the model. Uh, follow active quads uh, unwraps uh, uh, unwraps uh, face loops uh, just uh, so they create a um, equal uh, square uh, geometry in the in the UV editor. Uh, smart UV project. Uh, uh, this is a technique which uh, uses the angles between the faces uh, to introduce splits into the UV map. And unwrap uh, is the most uh, beloved technique. Uh, you actually introduce scenes uh, which uh, uh, individually uh, instructs Blender how to cut the UV island you're unwrapping. Okay, now the tools. Uh, And this is a selection of tools I am using quite commonly. Uh, so this is not all of it. Uh, the first one is pin vertices. It actually uh, logs the uh, coordinates of the vertex in a UV map uh, to the uh, surface of UV map. And if you move them manually, Blender is trying to compensate uh, the stretches and geometry uh, by moving the other, other points uh, of the UV map. And show stretch is another important technique. It actually shows you on the uh, color map how uh, much of a stretch the UV map uh, is representing. It goes from the blue uh, to the to uh, in case of a perfect unwrap, uh, that means if, if if the faces are not distorted, uh, to the red up to the red uh, in 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 case of a strong distortion. Uh, selection sinks. Uh, it basically uh, synchronizes the selection between the 3D model and the edges in UV editor. And live unwrap is uh, applying the changes uh, which we just made to the to the UV set. I mean, introducing the seams, clearing the seams, and it will be uh, live feedback feedback in the UV editor uh, window. Uh, proportional editing works just the same like the proportional editing in a 3D view. It means it creates a sort of a brush with a fall off and, 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 and the vertices are moved uh, uh, in a way that follows shows them. 
And UV sculpt uh, again is very uh, similar to, this, to the uh, mesh sculpt in Blender, uh, and you have, uh, I believe, three functions, uh, three different brushes. One is pinch, uh, other is relax, and the third one is, uh, I believe, stretch. I haven't shown that. And UV sitting is quite interesting uh, tool. It actually shows you uh, you can you can uh, using the UV stitching you can stitch the islands of UVs, and uh, it shows you feedback uh, in the UV uh, editor window. Uh, uh, this technique. Uh, uh, it, it does, uh, how it works, it depends uh, on what you actually select. If you select edges, it will look different. If you select points, uh, it will also work different. Mm, when you think of it, it makes perfect sense. Now, uh, if you start to use all those techniques all together at the same point, you will get a very nice feedback. Uh, you will be able to identify mistakes you make, identify problems, fix them, uh, introduce new stitches, stitches uh, clear the existing ones, and make the map as uh, close to the perfection as, as you can imagine. Uh, now, texture painting, I think I need to cover this. Um, but I will say what I use texture paint for, uh, and uh, when I have uh, made a procedural texture, uh, because later on I'll talk about this some more, uh, I create text base textures in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever, uh, and then I'm trying to uh, refine them because they will show a lot of mistakes. Obviously, it's not. Mm, perfectly fine, and 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 I don't have a feedback while create uh, on the model while cre while I create those textures in uh, Photoshop, and you will need fixes. And I use Texture Paint to fix uh, edges and and seams and any other uh, artifacts or mistakes that appear in a in the model texturing. And you can also paint with using uh, using the texture. Uh, now, the main point, which is texturing the very, very complex objects. Uh, I broke down to the, you know, pipeline sort of uh, checklist uh, story so we can uh, see how it uh, works step by step. By step. Um, also, I created this ugly model, which I'm very, very sorry for, uh, but it shows the general idea of, uh, of what I'm talking about. Uh, so the first part is uh, mm, optimizing and uh, creating the model, uh, which will be unwrapped later on. Uh, if you look at this bottom section, it shows you the steps and uh, mm, how the uh, current step influences the, the work on, 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 on uh, later stages. Uh, so if your model uh, has the axis of symmetry, mm, it is symmetrical. Uh, it's good to establish this uh, this this axis of symmetry. Uh, why do we do that? Because uh, if you have axis of sym symmetry, and uh, you will unwrap just a half of a model uh, later on, uh, if you apply the mirror modifier, uh, you have actually two UV islands of those halves of a model overlapping each other. That's why, uh, in this case, you save. Uh, twice the UV space and texture resolution. Uh, and you do the same for the parts of a model, uh, just because if you make the mirror modifier uh, on the parts you can uh, use the mirror modifier on, uh, you will have twice less uh, unwrapping and also twice higher resolution of the bitmap. And that's how it looks with the mirror modifier. Uh, okay, next thing is array modifiers, and it's basically the same thing like uh, uh, I uh, told you with uh, mirror modifiers. Uh, so the UV will overlap after applying the modifier, and uh, you will save texture space, texture, texture res resolution, and time you uh, need to uh, use to unwrap uh, uh, the parts. Uh, okay, uh, sometimes it is impossible to use the um, 
array or memory modifier. And let's say you have a piece of geometry like, like those green pieces right here, uh, and you just cannot use the array to, to, to arrange them in this way. Uh, so um, a step I recommend is that you create first piece of, ge piece of geometry, uh, unwrap it, and then duplicate it. Because it's the same thing, you'll have unwrapped object and uh, overlapping UVs. Uh, the optimization of a model. Uh, as you can see, uh, on this model there are some intersecting geometries. Like, uh, mm, there, is a, uh, part, there are parts of geometry which you cannot actually see, that are inside the model. And uh, while unwrapping, uh, those islands will be represented in UV space and they are unnecessary, hence they are wasting the texture. Uh, so optimization uh, is getting rid of those excess faces. Um. Okay, uh, sometimes uh, in, a, in case of a huge model, uh, you want to have a decent resolution of a texture. Uh, you can make it uh, uh, using two methods. Either you can use outrageously huge texture map, which is, well, I don't recommend this, uh, or you can use a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, texture maps. Uh, and now, uh, if you use couple of, if you split your model into uh, two, three, or more parts, uh, this is very likely that you uh, split those parts uh, uneven. Uh, I mean, the area of the parts would be would be different for the, for, uh, for them, and uh, um, to avoid that, uh, I used to measure uh, the area of. of of the model. I separate the parts. Uh, at this point I have numerous uh, array modifiers, mirror modifiers, and the model, uh, model is uh, uh, blown to pieces, so to speak. Uh, and uh, I tend to uh, measure, uh, add the areas of, uh, of the elements and uh, establish the uh, area of a whole model. Um, also, I uh, uh, I have all the all the areas of a separate objects measured, uh, and I find it a good thing to uh, name those objects by uh, the the, number, the area of of, of their uh, surface. Okay, now unwrapping the individual parts, uh, and I'm not going to go into it um, too much. Uh, but when you unwrap the part of a model, uh, you uh, place it away from the UV te uh, texture space, from, from the workspace of UV. Why do I do that? Uh, because, uh, as I said before, I have numerous objects on, uh, on my scene right now. And at some point, I will have to join them. Uh, if I would unwrap them all in the UV, UV work area, uh, they would sit on each other. Now, separating, packing, and uh, selecting those parts would be a nightmare. Uh, that's why I... Uh, I usually do it uh, in a very primitive method. I just take a piece of paper, uh, draw a grid, and, and, and select uh, uh, where did I unwrap uh, the parts. That's the method for uh, uh, to make sure that I don't duplicate the maps over each other. Uh, and now, if you have an array modifier that uses the same parameters, or uh, the mirror modifier that uh, has the same middle point, uh, you can create, you can join those uh, those modifiers, uh, and it's a start to to you know putting model together again together again. Uh, now, uh, this is the point when you uh, apply the modifiers you, you previously created. I mean the mirrors and the rays, although you don't apply the uh, main mirror modifier for the whole object if you have one. And now, uh, if you decided to create uh, more than one texture set, uh, this is the part when you uh, join the objects together so they have equal uh, area of, 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 of the model. Uh, and this is where the fun starts, actually. Uh, you need to even out all the islands of the UVs, because uh, since you took different objects of different sizes and you unwrap them in the UV space, basically, that's, that's what you do, uh, 
uh, they will have very very uh, different sizes and you don't want you do not want that because uh, different sizes of UV uh, islands means that you um, have uh, that you will have uh, different density and resolution of the texture after uh, after after texturing the model so you even out the scale and you pack all the maps to the UV workspace. Hmm, that looks bad. Um, and after that, you can apply the main uh, mirror modifier. Um, okay. Uh, now, as I said before, I used to create I used to create textures and textures in Photoshop or GIMP. I just multiply the effects, try to make the uh, file as uh, flexible as it is possible. So all the colors, all the masks uh, are, are very important in this process. Uh, also, um, to create this uh, file, I use uh, uh, two bags. Uh, I bake the materials. Uh, if my model has different materials, like rubber or windshields or grid in front, uh, I need to be able to recognize them in a Photoshop file right, later on. So I just place some color on it, bake the map, and it uh, it's, uh, it represents um, some point of uh, uh, reference in, in, in the Photoshop. Uh, also, I used to bake the uh, ambient occlusion. Um, but this is risky because if your model isn't perfectly mirrored, uh, this will cause some problems. Because uh, let's say, uh, um, in case of this model, you see that uh, the driver's cabin is actually not uh, symmetrical to the other side. And if I bake ambient occlusion map, uh, it will be dark map in this part. Uh, and uh, due to the mirror modifier, uh, this dark part will appear on the other side, I'm sorry, where is it? Oh, there. And obviously, there should be no shadow on the side. Mm. So those are the textures. And this is how the model looks after I uh, texture it with a uh, roughly made base textures in a Photoshop. Um, you can encounter some errors. Uh, I mean, they are not that obvious in this case. Uh, but uh, if you, for example, have very rusty plane here, uh, and it will join with a, uh, almost no rust uh, in this case, uh, it will be very, very visible. And this is the part I use when I use uh, texture paint to even out those uh, those mistakes. Uh, I mostly use clone um, uh, from the texture I just created, and also I used to, um, in case of a metal uh, objects, I I create those uh, bright uh, bare metal scenes. It also serves very well uh, in in terms of uh, covering the seams on the model. Uh, Okay, now one thing I miss very much in Blender in, in, in packing is that uh, when you have overlapping UV maps and you uh, use automatic packing to pack it, it actually splits uh, to the individual parts. And it would be great uh, if Blender someday introduced sort of, I don't know, uh, grouping those uh, maps together so they one wouldn't split in, uh, when you auto unwrap them. Okay, so to round it up, uh, it's good to remember about optimizing the model, like I said, which, which uh, like I said before, uh, uh, it's good to use uh, uh, symmetries and arrays uh, because it saves you time and space and and uh, and so on. Uh, uh, if you know you are going to use some geometry uh, on and on in the model and you cannot use the array or mirror modifier, you should unwrap it at the first place. Uh, 
it's very efficient and very clear uh, to work on uh, smaller geometries, to split the model into smaller geometries. Uh, the first thing is uh, it is more, uh, is it much easier to work on the uh, just a few uh, UV islands at the time, and also uh, if you have a very high poly model. Uh, uh, believe me, uh, with this kind of geometry, uh, your uh, UV editing will be a nightmare because it will be uh, jumpy no matter what kind of computer you have, it will be slow. So working on small models actually gives you more um, uh, work, with, you can work with more comfort. Um. Okay, you split the section and uh, split the sections of a model and uh, measure their uh, areas. Um, and okay, uh, if you decided to uh, split your models into uh, parts uh, to achieve better uh, texture resolution, um, it, it might be good uh, if you split it into the four, nine, or uh, uh, or sixteen parts. Why? Because uh, it creates an easy way to put it back together. Uh, I mean, you can create uh, later on join those uh, scale the UV maps uh, in half in case of four textures. Um, uh, Place them in corners of the UV map, and in this way you uh, you will get uh, a model which which can be mapped by one one texture. Mm. Okay, and when you use uh, uh, it's it, it's important to use bleed function uh, when texturing models uh, because with bleed function you avoid. Uh, appearing of those uh, tiny black lines uh, on the edges of, of, of your UV map. And it's important to remember, um, when you use uh, texture paint and uh, baking the textures, uh, to um, change the values of a bleed. Uh, first of all, if you have a big texture, like 4K texture, uh, you will need to use the bleed uh, size of uh, 20 pixels, for example, uh, because uh, it gives you an opportunity to scale, scale the texture down. If you have a 4K texture and you use a small bleed, if you scale it down, it will appear uh, as, a, as, as those uh, black lines in, uh, in the uh, smaller texture. Okay, and this is an example uh, of the Photoshop file I mm, created for some model. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's uh, filled with uh, patterns and colors and uh, curves and all the kind of uh, uh, all kind of uh, effects that I can uh, very quickly change. Okay, uh, save your files. <laughs> uh, less obvious usage of UV maps. Uh, some time ago, uh, I wanted to create a render image of a cabinet. Uh, as far as, uh, as it comes to uh, simple geometry, I can fade a perspective in, 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 in uh, vector graphic uh, software. Uh, when it comes to more complex objects, it's hard to, uh, hard to make it. So I was kind of stuck with this thought, how do I render to uh, curves uh, so that, so that I, I can use them in, in, in Inkscape or Il Illustrator later on. And uh, it was a bit funny. Uh, actually, the one I think I think the one uh, possible uh, thing to export something in Blender uh, using the curves is UV Editor. Uh, also, you can unwrap the object, uh, unwrap the object uh, by projecting it from view, which gives you curves. <laughs> Uh, so, just a couple of steps. I uh, used, uh, I, I tried to uh, simplify ge the geometry, uh, geometry as much as I could. So I got rid of all the back faces. I created a couple of end guns instead of uh, more faces, because uh, later on, uh, it uh, it makes the job easier in in Inkscape or Illustrator. You have less faces to connect together. Mm, and this is the final effect. 
Uh, okay, and now the less obvious usage of, uh, of the seamless textures. Mm, uh, this is a typical UV space. Um, uh, and this is your texture. And sometimes people tend to forget that this texture is uh, multiplied over and over up to the eternity. Um, you can use this in a very, very good way. Uh, because let's say you're texturing an object to a game. Uh, and those planks uh, need to have quite decent resolutions and when the player, cam the player comes to comes to the closer to an object he doesn't see the mm, you know bad quality textures and in games you need to use small textures this is actually 512 by 512 uh, and unwrapping those planks uh, uh, I scaled them up uh, behind the workspace of a UV uh, which used one direction of a seamless texture, actually. Uh, uh, and this texture is multiplied a couple of times in the z-axis or this axis on the model. So it's quite efficient. And also the thing that people tend to forget is uh, creating atlases of the textures. Uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, sometimes you just can't uh, use or hold the UV space or hold the texture space uh, uh, with one object, with one model. Mm, that is when, uh, that's when you can use uh, mm, use the same texture to texture the other, other object. And as you can see, this is you know, parts of a house, this is some door, this is part of a roof, and there's actually a couple of houses on this texture. Okay, thank you.